Hi, I'm Mr. V, and this is uh, Illustrative Mathematics, our text. We're in Unit 4, Right Triangle Trigonometry, and today's lesson is about half of a square. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to say, I can determine the lengths of the sides of a triangle with 45, 45, and 90 degree angles. For the warm-up, we are going to calculate the uh, length x here, the hypotenuse, and the length here, y the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And if I were doing these, I would say, um, I expect you to try to do them on your own. There is a graphic organizer that you can use throughout any math class, and this is it's really appropriate for most math classes. And that's to write the formula, to substitute the values, and then to solve. So the formula we will use is the a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem, where c is the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter which side you choose for a or b, as long as they are the legs of the right triangle. But the longest side is opposite the largest angle. This right angle points to the longest side, and it has to be associated with c. So I don't, I'm not going to put x just anywhere. I'll put it here when I substitute the values. So I have 4 squared plus 7 squared. 4 squared is 16, 7 squared is 49, is equal to x squared, so 65 is equal to x squared, and when we take the square root of both sides, now this is something, you get to algebra 2, and you take the square root of both sides, you're going to have a plus and a minus value. In geometry, we're going to ignore the negative root, and the reason is because we're dealing with a length, and we don't want to talk about a negative length. So this value is the exact answer, the square root of 65, and if you were to... Uh, you can't simplify it because this is the square root of 13, what is it, 5 times 13. So this doesn't simplify. But it's approximately, and we use the double tilde here for approximately, it's approximately 8, maybe 8.1, 8. I think 8.1, something like that. It's approximately 8. For the second question, we do the same thing. We'll write the formula. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We'll substitute the values. Here, our hypotenuse is y, so this goes with the c squared. It doesn't always happen that way. I might give you a side in hypotenuse. And any right triangle, when I give you two sides, you can find the third side using the Pythagorean theorem, if you plug it in correctly. 8 squared plus 14 squared. And here we have um, 8 squared is 64 plus 14 squared, which is 296 and 196, which is equal to y squared. y squared is equal to 260. And again, I'm going to solve this by taking the square root of both sides. So I get y is equal to, and we'll ignore the negative root, 260. And this is the exact answer, but this simplifies. 260 has factors of 2 times 2 times 13 times 5. Now there's a double. When you take the square root, the doubles can come out from under the square root. So the square root of 2 times 2 is just 2 times, and then 13 times 5 is 65. So this is my exact answer. And if you want an approximation, I think it's between, what is this, 260 is between 15 and 16 or something? 16 and 17? I, let's just look it up. 260 square root of 260 is about 16.1. So it's approximately 16.1. 16.1. I think if you did the exact answer, it's 16.124. Now, this is not exact. This is still approximation. The exact answer is right here and right here. This is better because it's simplified. This is still an approximation. So the question we have in this activity is, when we synthesize it, what's an appropriate level of accuracy of precision? How many decimals should we take it to? Do, do we list all five, eight of them that are on the calculator or whatever? And how how big is this 65? If the x squared is 60, if x squared is 65, how big is x? What is the square root of 65? It's about how much? About eight. 
when you use a calculator. Um, we will use the convention in this class of rounding to the nearest tenth, unless otherwise specified. On an AP exam, it's typical that you would round to the third decimal. And sometimes knowing the exact answer like this is also useful. So if we go to a GeoGebra applet, and I think I can do that here, um, there are several tasks. It says here, refer to the task, the square one below. What is the side length? What is the length of the diagonal? Calculate the ratio of the diagonal to the square. And the way you do this is you move this around. You can rotate it with the red button. You should line up the zero on the ruler with one of the vertices. And then you can measure this. So if I try to make this larger so you can see it. Let's see here. I measure this as 5, and I measure the, the diagonal as 7.1. And there's three of these for you to do, and then you can make a conjecture. And when I do this, I have 5 and 7.1, so my ratio comes out to be um, 1.42. If I do this one, I get 3.5 and 4.95. And my ratio is again 1.4, 1.42, 1 1.41. Here we have 10 and 14.15. So my ratio is 14.1 or 1.4 is what it comes out to be. And the conjecture that you could make out of this, and the, the, you should try this yourself and you make a conjecture. So in math, we, we make assertions and then we test it out a bunch of times so that we make a conjecture. And then we can do a proof of what it is. So we can make, actually make a proof. So here, what we're doing is um, the conjecture. A conjecture could be the diagonal of a square seems to be the side length multiplied by 1.4. Every time it was multiplied by 1.4. Do you agree with this statement? That the diagonal of a square with the side length s is about 1.4 times s? How about this statement? The diagonal of a square with side length s is exactly s times the square root of 2. And if we were to do this using um, a square of side length 1, so this is 1, this is 1, this is a 45, 45, these two are the same, and 90, and we want to know what, what this length is. We could say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. If 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared, 2 is equal to c squared, so c is equal to the square root of 2. So if this is 1, this is square 2. If you want to generalize it, you could put the side length of s. And here you have s squared plus s squared, or 2s squared is equal to c squared. So when you take the square root, you get s times the square root of 2. This would be the exact number. And so this graphic organizer should make it somewhere into your notes. If you have half of a square, you have an isosceles right triangle. It's got to be a right triangle. And... The side length is s, it's half of a square. The hypotenuse is going to be s times the square root of 2. Or it's going to be approximately s, the side length, times 1.4. So this is the exact answer, exact. And this is the approximate. And if you plug this in, this first one into your calculator, and you get a decimal. That's an approximate. When it uses the actual square root of 2 in there, it gives you the, the, the exact answer. Um, we divide it into groups, and you're supposed to go through and answer the question on what are the, what are the side lengths here. And again, I'm using my graphic organizer of side, side, and side times the square root of 2. So we have 3, 3, 3 times the square root of 2 or about 3 times 1.4, which is about 4.2, approximately. We have 14 and 14. It's isosceles, right triangle. So it's 14 times the square root of 2 is the exact answer. It's about 1.9, no, 19.6. You know what it is? No, is that right? No, that's not right. 14 times the square root of 2. Um, times the square root of 2 is about 19.8. 19.8. It's about 19.8. And here, to find this side length, you could substitute in the value. 24 is equal to my side length times the square root of 2. 
and divide both sides by the square root of two to find out what it is. Or this student of mine, Danny Zeffalato, my second year of teaching, he said, he said, well, this is a, if you cut this in half, this is going to be 45, 45. So this is 12 and 12. And this is just whatever that is times the square root of two. So this side is about 16.8. So that's another way of viewing this same problem. When you do this, you get about 16.8. What else about this lesson? Um, different ways of writing the same thing. Can you see that 19.8 is one way of writing it? 19.6 is what you would get if you multiply by 1.4 instead of times the square root of 2 in your calculator. This is exact, and it's simplified. This is the preferred way of writing it. Any of these are acceptable, though. So make sure that this graphic makes it into your thing. There are several applications that you can try, like with the baseball diamond and some others. And there's a summary here for you to read, which tells you that if I know the two sides of a half of half of a square to find the hypotenuse, it's going to be the side length times the square root of 2. So in the closing, you should be able to find out this. This is 6.5. This would be 6.5. This would be 6.5 times the square root of 2, or times 1.4.